morph in time. Astron! Pterodactyl! Triceratops! Saber 2 Tiger! Go, go, Power Rangers! Back in 1993, Western TV got a dose of something totally new, and it took the world by storm. Enter the Power Rangers, a show that has been sparking emotions and imagination since its debut. From its real-life martial arts choreography to its CGI and lifelike special effects, the Power Rangers saga has held viewers in its grip for literal decades. From the very moment the theme music starts to play and the Rangers assemble, you know you're in for an epic 30-minute adventure of battles jam-packed with Mighty Morphin action. But underneath that Mighty Morphin action, the costumes, and the clever plot lines, the show has had its fair share of dark secrets too. Soon, you'll know everything I know about the Power Rangers that was kept silent for years. To understand the drama off screen, let's first take a look at its history. Previously on Power Rangers, Rita's plan to place Tommy under an evil spell puts Jason. Before the Power Rangers graced us with their heroism, an unassuming Japanese TV show quietly laid the foundation for the global entertainment sensation. Have you ever heard of Super Sentai? It's a genre defining series originating in Japan. And it was this show that provided the inspiration for the Power Rangers. In the early 1970s, Super Sentai flashed its way to nearly every TV screen in Japan. It was also called Dinosaur Squadron, and it featured an ensemble of colorful heroes who fought against evil with passion and a certain flair. The series followed a simple formula. Brave heroes, mighty villains, and colossal robots called mechas. The show's charm lay in its masterful blend of action, drama, and the simple and pure joy of watching heroes unite to save the day. What sets Super Sentai apart is its ability to evolve without losing its core essence. Just like the Power Rangers, each new season brought a fresh team of heroes, complete with unique costumes, weapons, and personal struggles. Whether battling space invaders, ancient evils, or even time-traveling adversaries, Super Sentai amazed its audience through the power of unity and courage, and it was only a matter of time before it was on the radar of rich media executives wanting to bring it to the Western market. As we look back to the roots of the magic of the Power Rangers, it's impossible to ignore the striking similarities to Super Sentai. It gave rise to a genre with strong themes of heroism, friendship, and the foundational core belief that good can actually triumph over evil. That and their suits are also a little bit similar. The idea to adapt the show for American audiences laid the groundwork for what would eventually become the Power Rangers. The result? The iconic masterpiece that is the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The tale began in 1993 when the first season of the Power Rangers battled their way onto screens with a literal lightning bolt. Created by Hayam Saban, this unique show was literally a melting pot of East meets West, fusing footage from the Japanese superhero series Super Sentai with original American scenes. The weaving of the original Japanese footage with newly shot American scenes not only created a dynamic visual experience, but it also showcased the fact that storytelling can be universal. Viewers were instantly drawn to the charismatic team of teenagers, Jason, Kimberly, Billy, Trini, Zack, and later Tommy who transformed into the Power Rangers to protect the world from the forces of darkness. This motley crew of heroes not only battled menacing villains, but also navigated the normal challenges of adolescence that resonated with viewers on a deeply relatable level. As the series evolved, new and unique Ranger teams emerged. From the mysterious Zeo Crystal to the intergalactic Lost Galaxy, the Power Rangers consistently reinvented themselves, keeping the attention of new generations while staying true to their core values of unity, courage, and teamwork. Did you know that the third season of Power Rangers even introduced the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to the mix? If you're a fan of the classic Ninja Turtles like me, this was an epic crossover event where the Power Rangers joined forces with the pizza-loving reptilian heroes to thwart evil together. It was a collision of two massively iconic worlds that left fans of both franchises nearly peeing their pants in excitement. Imagine being a kid and your two biggest favorite superhero groups from two entirely separate worlds joined together in heart pumping and ground stopping action to stop the villains dead in their tracks. Speaking of villains, the Power Rangers truly knew how to illustrate the forces of evil. The Power Rangers rogues gallery boasts some legendary villains, but none are as iconic as Rita Repulsa. <laughs> Her wicked cackles and devious schemes were brought to life by actress Mishiko Soga. What's truly astonishing is that Mishiko Soga previously played a hero in the Japanese Super Sentai series before she took on the role as the villainous Rita Repulsa. 
the franchise has expanded far beyond television to conquering the comic book world, video games, toys, and even the big screen with feature-length films. Despite the occasional controversies and changes, the Power Rangers remain a cultural touchstone today, in a testament to the enduring power of camaraderie and the universal appeal of heroes standing up against adversity. From its modest beginnings to its status as the mighty, more phenomenal icon, the Power Rangers have grown and transformed. But their ability to ignite imagination, inspire action, and bring generations together remains as strong as the Morphin grid that powers them. However, Despite how fondly the show is thought of by its army of fans, there are a number of controversies that have emerged around the show since it began in the 90s. Blue Rangers back. <laughs> David Yost, who played Billy Cranston, the brainy and resourceful Blue Ranger, he was an instant favorite among fans of the show. Yost has been very vocal about his experiences during his time on the show and shed light on challenges he faced and the struggles endured behind the scenes as a young gay man. He revealed that he experienced a toxic work environment of rampant homophobia. He was subject to derogatory comments, homophobic slurs, and ridicule from members of the production team and even fellow cast members. At one point, his castmates were pulled aside by management and were questioned about his sexuality. All of these things took a toll on his mental health and his emotional well-being. He felt isolated and eventually fell into a dark depression. As time went on, the discrimination became increasingly unbearable to him, ultimately driving him to consider taking his own life. After years of enduring insults, he finally made the decision to leave the show to protect his sanity. Initially, his exit from the show was chalked up to pay issues, but in 2010, he revealed the real reasons why he left the show. After walking away from his role as Billy, he tried to change his sexuality through corrective therapy, which led him to a mental breakdown. This is what he had to say about why he left the show. He heard this insult from creators, producers, writers, and even the directors. He felt he was continually being told he wasn't worthy of being on the show and was definitely not a superhero. However, in recent news, David Yost has returned to the show as Billy and also a permanent mentor in the newest season, the 30th, called Cosmic Fury. This came after a cameo appearance in the 30th anniversary special. It's actually pretty amazing to see David putting the difficult history behind him and going back to the Rangers. This means that fans will get to see the iconic and original Blue Ranger. However, in a dark twist of fate, there is someone who won't be reunited with their on-screen character, Skylar Deleon. Skylar Deleon's involvement with the Power Rangers took a dark turn when he plastered himself all over the news in a high-profile controversy. Deleon's actions cast an eerie shadow over the show's reputation and raised some questions about the entertainment industry's ability to deal with legal and ethical issues involving its own actors. John Julius Jacobson Jr., that's his real name, but he took to the name Skylar Deleon as a stage name. He appeared in the show in the late 1990s and was a big part of the legacy of Saban's Rangers. Deleon's character development was impeccable. He was confident, bold, and daring and created a relatable persona for viewers to relate to. However, Deleon's performance was later eclipsed by his involvement in a horrendous crime. After he left the show, he got married and began living a normal life, but after running into financial hardship around the year 2002, he and his wife began committing crimes to get ahead, including robbing small businesses. However, that would pale in comparison to what happened next. In 2004, Deleon and his wife, Jennifer Henderson, had massive debts and devised a plan to lure a married couple onto their yacht under the pretense of wanting to purchase it for $435,000. Tragically, Thomas and Jackie Hawks were murdered, tied to the anchor of their yacht, and thrown overboard in a plot to steal their assets. Their bodies were never found. During the trial that followed, Deleon and his ex-wife were convicted of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to death by lethal injection. However, due to the moratorium in California, he will live out his days on death row. His wife received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. Skyler later changed his gender to female while in prison and now considers himself a woman. Skyler Preciosa de Leon. He had apparently been researching gender reassignment surgery prior to his crime. De Leon's conviction not only devastated the lives of the victims' families, but also had repercussions for the Power Rangers franchise. The association of a former cast member with a crime of this nature cast a cloud over the show and raised some eyebrows at the industry and its ability to ensure the moral character of its actors. Oddly enough, another Red Ranger actor, Jason Lawrence Geiger, also fell into a life of crime. 
He was charged with wire fraud conspiracy and stole $3.5 million from the CARES Act that was designed to provide financial relief during COVID-19. He was just one of about 18 people involved in the scheme. He faces up to 20 years in prison. But the show has also damaged its own reputation over the years, too. Destroy the Power Rangers! The Power Rangers franchise faced scrutiny for its handling of race issues and racial profiling, particularly in its early seasons. Many of its astute viewers were keen to note many instances where the casting choices, character developments, and the representations of the colorful team have perpetuated harmful racial stereotypes. Their actions raised a lot of questions about diversity, inclusivity, and the need for responsible storytelling in children's entertainment. One of the most curious controversies involved the casting choices for the Power Rangers. In the debut season of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the Black Ranger was portrayed by Walter Jones, an African American. The Yellow Ranger was played by Ty Trang, a Vietnamese American, and the Pink Ranger by Amy Jo Johnson, a very bubbly girly personality and also a Caucasian. These color-coded roles coincide with racial stereotypes that have long been associated with black, Asian, and white individuals. The unfortunate correlation drew accusations of insensitivity and racial profiling. Beyond the casting, early seasons of the show sometimes portrayed characters in a manner that reinforced racial stereotypes. For example, characters from Asian backgrounds were often portrayed as very tech-savvy or even having impressive martial arts skills. The criticism over racial issues prompted Saban to reevaluate the approach. As the show continued, efforts were made to present characters from various ethnic backgrounds with diverse personalities, abilities, and storylines that moved beyond stereotypes. In other words, they made sure that the colors of their suits had nothing to do with the color of their skin. Instead, they decided to cast actors who represented their characters authentically. You obviously don't know who you're dealing with, Mr. Raisinhead. Really? Yeah. We're the Power Rangers. The Power Rangers have been around for decades for one reason. They are successful. With success in this industry comes money. You'd think that the actors were adequately paid for all the work they did. After all, many of them performed their own stunts and risked injuring themselves. They also worked between 70 and 90 hours per week for the show that was a non-union production. The Pink Ranger, Amy Jo Johnson, came forward in 2010 and revealed to the world that they were paid about $600 on weeks when they recorded two full episodes, requiring them to work 15 hours a day, six days a week. Keep in mind that these very same people who donned the Power Ranger suits and shed blood, sweat, and literal tears for the job also had their very own action toys. Meanwhile, the franchise generated about $1 billion every year. The Screen Actors Guild and American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, or SAG-AFTRA, is an American labor union representing approximately 160,000 media professionals worldwide today. Back in 1998, SAG forbade union actors to work for any Sabin production on account of claims that they exploited child actors and their parents refusing to pay union rates. Do you remember Zordon? The weird blue thing, the all-knowing galactic wizard that the rangers turned to for wisdom? That actor was given $150 for an entire day of filming that they used for about 150 episodes. They paid him for some voice work later as well, and they just dubbed over his previous footage. All in all, he ended up making about $1,200 in total for his contributions to the show. Because there were no proper contracts in place, his face was used in merchandising as well but he received no residuals and no royalties. The problem with the pay being peanuts for the cast stretched beyond their personal checkbooks. It also permeated into the show's production itself. Pink Ranger Amy Jo Johnson came forward in a variety interview, stating that the stunts they performed were so low budget and makeshift, she admitted she nearly died on several occasions. She said that some stage equipment had once caught fire and nearly burned her alive, that it should have never happened and it wouldn't have if it was a union production. Are the Power Rangers finished? Find out on the conclusion of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers miniseries next. Lastly, Jason David Frank, my personal favorite Power Ranger, none other than Tommy as the Green Ranger. He was an instant hit and a favorite to most fans, especially when he returned as the infamous White Ranger. He was extensively involved in the show and even returned to fill in as the Red Turbo Ranger in 2002, the Black Dino Ranger in 2004, a 2017 cameo as a citizen of Angel Grove, and in 2018 with a return to his roots as Tommy Oliver. 
Jason was also involved in several other spin-offs of the show, but was also well known for his fighting and martial arts skills, with training in Shotokan, Wadorayu, Taekwondo, Judo, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Muay Thai, Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do, and Aikido. He created his own blend of American karate, Toso Kundo, the way of the fist fighter, or the way of the fighting fist. On June 28, 2003, he was inducted into the World Karate Union Hall of Fame. Jason was even a Guinness World Record holder when he successfully broke the existing record for the most one-inch pine boards broken during freefall. In 2017, he was targeted by a man named Matthew Sterling while attending Comic-Con in Phoenix, Arizona. Luckily, the police were able to arrest Sterling before he got near Jason, after being tipped off from social media threats made by Sterling. Sterling brought an arsenal of weapons to the Phoenix Comic-Con. He was found guilty except insane and later committed to 25 and a half years at the Arizona State Hospital. Jason began attending a Christian church after the death of his brother Eric. He married his first wife, Shauna, in 1994, and they had three children together before divorcing in 2001. In 2003, he married his second wife, Tammy, and they had one daughter. In 2022, Tammy filed for divorce. On November 19th, 2022, Frank was found dead in a hotel in Houston, Texas, having committed suicide. Tammy, who was also staying in the hotel, explained that Frank had been struggling with depression and mental health issues. Such a tragic end to a legendary icon and an inspiration to many children over the years. Yet he maintains his legendary status to this day and his reputation won't be tarnished in my eyes. Instead, he lives on as a symbol of confidence because when you watch him on screen, you can't help but mimic him and feel like a true badass. Guess who's back? I don't believe it. <laughs> so, there you have it. Despite the dark clouds cast over the Power Rangers at times, in its 30 years of existence, the massive global fan base and continued adoration of the show speaks volumes. It has endured the test of time and presses on to its 30th season under its new owner, Hasbro. But now, at least the cast are protected by SAG after contracts. That's all for today. What did I miss? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Morphin Time! Tiger Zord! Oh!